Hello. Um, today I'm here to talk about the uh, last uh, uh, movie that I have of Alfred Hitchcock's from uh, the Criterion Collection, which is The Lady Vanishes. Um, it's been quite some time since I uh, watched this or any of the others, so um, I had a very vague idea of what the film was just because it's been some years since I last watched this um, but you know it's like a conspiracy essentially um, <clears throat> a woman named Iris who's going home to England um, by train um, uh, it, it, first we see her and very other people in the film who will be very key characters as it goes on, um, recurring and by the end fairly important. Um, they uh, meet up at this hotel in a European uh, town. It's not very uh, big, basically, and uh, or at least not as well known as some other places. And we're snowed in, and so I have to wait till morning to get uh, going on wherever it is that they're heading toward, you know, England or any stop along the way. Uh, and uh, 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 Gilbert is someone who she meets and is very vital in the film, who is a musician. You know, uh, <clears throat> Iris, is, again, is to be married, and so, and she's not totally uh doesn't seem to be very excited about that and uh she meets a a woman uh, miss F uh Freud, um who's like a governess and um a lot is about you know regarding this woman and she uh, as things go on and they get to the train the next uh morning and miss Freud and Iris talk and they, they go to Aiden. Iris uh, gets hit on the head uh, by somebody whom we don't see. You know, there's like a something falling out of a window that's pushed. Uh, more specifically, it's pushed out of a window and, you know, it seems to intend to hit uh, Miss Froy in the head, but instead it hits. Um, uh, Iris, and so, uh, you know, later she goes and on the train falls asleep, and then she wakes up, and then Froy isn't there, and she's basically being convinced by others, like, you know, she got hit on the head, and she's just imagining this woman, um, even though she describes very vividly what she was wearing and everything, and then, like, she had a specific tea that she makes, and so, you know, it's like, uh, as it goes on, it's like, oh, these, uh, all these people are, like, either all involved in a conspiracy, uh, or she might be, she might have actually gotten hit on the head and is imagining this woman. Um, well, turns out uh, she wasn't imagining the woman, of course. Especially since she met her at this hotel, and uh, you know, prior to that, uh, somebody was uh, killed. Um, was uh, uh, singing and playing an instrument at at the uh, hotel. Um, but yeah. Uh, Gilbert is sort of in doubt at, at first, and then he sees like a, uh, a label of the tea that was apparently uh, that you know that was said that Miss Froy would drink. She would drink these uh, like this specific tea, and uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting in how basically. 
this conspiracy is going on through various people among the train and then there's a, some people who just don't really care too much like don't want to be roped into anything like if it's something that could be a big deal you know like uh, uh, there's a man and a woman who basically is like having an affair and doesn't want his name in the picture or the papers and so he's trying to stay out of it as much as possible the woman he's with doesn't seem to care much um but this uh, it's a very interesting film to watch um early in the beginning of the movie i remembered i thought it was a, a bit slow at first but uh upon you know once the entire film is done and you look back it's like it's kind of necessary for it to be fairly slow um because of all that happens in this whole conspiracy with the like with this Freud who's all uh, this doctor and is saying like you know the Irish might have you know she's just seeing things and you know who was all in on this and just what develops it's very it's a very interesting uh concept and one that has been done various times before um, of course there are various other uh, versions of this film that have been made I think there's like a total of three including you know this one included of the lady vanishes um, based on a story I forget the um, but, uh, what does the or do that does it even say in here? I know it said in the film uh, based on the level the wheel spins. Okay, yeah, by Ethel Lena White. Okay, so it does say that. It says so in the credits, but I'm like, does it say so in here? You know, I thought it would, considering Criterion usually does uh, make sure to uh, um, have what's basically the, some essential credits um, into this into their releases and um yeah, very uh, uh excellent film um this uh, also has a uh, commentary of course and there's also crook's tour a 1941 feature length adventure film starring as radford and Newton wayne as charters and collected the beloved characters from this film um two Englishmen who basically are in this film and they really want to get back to England for like a cricket uh, uh, match like there's like this cricket stuff going on in England they want to get to and there's that whole thing and at first it's like it's kind of like eh, okay this is interesting I guess you know of course they're not the main focus but it, it is definitely interesting to see how as the film goes on they, 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 how prominent and important uh, parts that they play um, I did not uh, check that out again uh, on here I, I know for a fact I've like at least looked at all these special features uh, once before um, and again there's another excerpt from Francisco Truffaut's um, 1962 interview with Hitchcock and there's a mystery train an essay about Hitchcock and the lady vanishes by Hitchcock scholar Leonard Leaf who And the still uh, scenes, uh, still gallery photos, and promotional art, and it was a booklet with essays from critic Jeffrey O'Brien and Hitchcock scholar uh, Charles Barr. Um, so a couple of Hitchcock scholars uh, with this uh, edition. Um, yeah, very uh, very good film. Um, very entertaining from uh, beginning to end. Uh, Margaret Lockwood and um, Michael Raygrave give uh, excellent performances uh, throughout the film. Um, um, May Whitty is uh, fantastic. Um, uh, or Dane May Whitty, I should say. Um, yeah, this is a Another uh, fantastic film. Um, 
more on the mystery side and then I guess perhaps uh, I mean there is suspense of course but you know there seems to be a very emphasis on mystery more than say you know uh, the 39 steps or the man who knew too much um, of course there were mystery elements in those but you know there's a lot of suspense with those two movies you know that seemed to be uh, I guess a little more prominent at least from you know, of course I'm viewing these uh, films uh, fairly uh, not too long after uh, the other like a day might pass and I don't watch one and I'll give my thoughts on them and so on and so forth so it's like every other day or so for now I've been kind of doing that and it's been very fun um But yeah, this is um, this was really fun to go through. Um, I know there are some other, uh, I believe, other Hitchcock films um, that are in the Criterion Collection. So one day, um, I'd like to get another one uh, or two, um, and perhaps some other of his uh, most beloved films will come into the uh, Criterion Collection at some point. It's also, of course, you know, Shout Factory and Arrow and um, uh, Kino Lober. Lober. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, home video um, companies out there that uh, do great work. And so, you know, of course, Criterion isn't the uh, be all end all of non, you know, big uh, uh, studio. Companies that release uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, and all that stuff. Um, of course, uh, you know, there's others, but uh, Criterion really does a great job. And it's nice that uh, if they've handled these three films, um, and others, of course, uh, from Hitchcock. Um, it's really fun to re-watch them and just sort of give my uh, impressions after not watching them for quite some time. It's sort of interesting to see how my thoughts have perhaps changed a bit. Um, I don't know, yeah, this that last time with this film, I remember it was it seemed to be a little slow starting. Um, I don't know if I really thought that at first when I first saw this years ago, um, but I don't know. Maybe enough some time has passed, and I thought that that's that might maybe another time I'll uh, rewatch this movie, and I won't think that. Um, but in any case, uh, I do think the slow start with this film, or at least the appearing of a slow start for me, is not a bad thing. I think it kind of helps because then you see these characters, and what you know, what you know, they're sort of what, what they're going, like why they're heading where they are going, and why there's like some urgency for some characters to get home or to get one place to another. Yeah, it's it's, it's very uh, uh, a very uh, uh, fantastic uh, film. Um, I really enjoyed it. I uh, uh, you know I just uh, got finished with it not too long ago. So you know it's like I you know again there might be some people who haven't seen this, so I don't want to uh, give too much away. And on the off chance you're watching this and you haven't seen it. Of course, if you have, you know how everything uh, uh, ties up. Um, but uh, you know, it's like for a while, and you know, and again, it's been some time since I watched these films, and so for though with the man who knew too much, I basically knew the outcome of how that was going to uh, turn out. But for the Thirty Nine Steps and the Lady Vanishes, I will say there were. Uh, moments in the movie because it's again been some years uh, and I didn't completely recall every single detail uh, of how everything came about and so there were moments uh, in these films where I thought hmm maybe it won't end you know happily or something of the sort here though you know uh, 
you know, the, the, the ending is fairly satisfactory. Um, you know, be that a happy ending or not, um, <clears throat> it is very satisfactory. And, and of course, you know, Hitchcock doesn't always have happy endings, per se. Uh, Vertigo, I think, is a good example of one, where the ending isn't particularly happy. Uh, won't say what that is for those who haven't seen it, but... I think for that kind of film, it was fairly satisfactory, even if it was was not happy at all. <laughs> um, but uh, this one, you know, the ending seemed very appropriate. Um, it was very well done, well executed. Hitchcock, uh, you know, I really want to see even more uh, of his movies of, of the '30s. You know, I've seen many, of course, from the. 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, which seems to be a sort of like a period of that people really hone in on with Hitchcock and just, you know, uh, talk the most about. Um, but I think this is a film that uh, is worth discussing even more. You know, no doubt this does get up in conversations, but I think it's worth uh, talking about more. Um, and yeah, that's really it. I don't really have a whole lot more to say. Um, it's a good film, um, and I. Uh, and who knows? Maybe I'll uh, talk about uh, Crook's Tour uh, at some point. Um, made in 1941. This was from 1938. So you know, some years went by, and uh, uh, sort of a continuation of sorts, or another film, at least with these two characters from the film. Um, Yeah, that's really, uh, that's really it. Um, but, yeah. I hope uh, all of you are uh, doing well. Hope all of you are, uh, have, a, have a great day. Hope everybody's weekend will be great. And I hope uh, your week will be great as well. I'll see you all next time. Bye.